First, I want to show that, yeah, we actually do have this uh, Qt-based GUI. And this GUI is actually uh, QTs for the Trolltech QT, not the QuickTime QT. So it's a cross-platform GUI. Um, it should work on Linux if you have it. And then it also works in um, Windows. Um, and this is another way of generating a CMake project rather than through command line. Now, we're actually going to use the CMake GUI on the Windows side because most Windows users prefer GUIs anyway. So we'll get more into this GUI later. Um, but instead, I want to uh, demonstrate another one called CCMake. Now, CCMake is yet another GUI front end, except it's curses based rather than QT based. So like before, we need to make an out of source directory. So we're going to uh, make a directory called, let's say, build Mac. OS X Xcode. And we have also, we could also do Eclipse and make files on the Mac, but since we've already done this too, let's do something a little different. So we'll cd into that directory, and then if we do CMake, you'll see that we have an Xcode generator now. So rather than CMake though, we'll do CCMake, and then we'll pass the dash G switch for Xcode. And then, like before, we need to pass the directory to the source. So we'll do this. And now we get prompted to do several things. So first, we're going to get this empty cache thing. And we'll just hit C to configure. So now it's doing the auto confish thing that we've seen before. Um, instead of seeing all the output, it's all reduced down to here. But you can see we have all these options now that we can manipulate. Now, you could manipulate these through command line as well, but you need to know all the variable names and the switches. And sometimes it's just easier to look at the GUI and modify the um, values from here. Now, a lot of these values are um, from CMake. Um, and then some of these are support things that we've um, used to like find libraries. And then some of these have actually written specifically for our project. So for instance, once sh build shared library, our project does that, and we can specify if we want a dynamic library or a static library. For the Mac only, we also have an option to do once build framework, which specifies if we want uh, dialibs and multiple dialibs, sort of like the Linux, or if we want a unified umbrella framework, um, which um, is our default option, and then an app bundle for on the Mac. Um, now we can hit T to see even more options. And now you'll see actually a lot of CMake options as well. And some things I'll point out is um, CMake provides some basic uh, targets, debug, min size release, release, and release with bug info. And these are the def uh, default flags that they pass. And you can change these if you want. Um, and there's you know, lots of lots of other options. Um, Right now, I think the defaults are good. I didn't really need to come in here, but I just kind of wanted to show that you, this is one place you might change some of the options. So I'm just going to hit C to configure again. And my goal is to basically get this G to generate. So once you get to this stage, it means everything's generated far enough or configured far enough that you can actually try to generate a project. So I'm going to hit G. And if it works, it will generate an Xcode project and kick me out to the terminal, which I just did. And you'll see that I have a Chosky Xcode project now. So I'm going to open this up. And we should now see an Xcode project. And there we go. And so you can see that we have targets similar to the make file. Um, so we have this aggregate target that I made earlier. We got the install target, the everything. Um, and then these are the actual individual things, like the teapot example and the mem example and um, the Chosky framework. <clears throat> um, and one thing I do want to point out is um, in the IDE, we actually get multiple configurations. So we can say we want to debug, we want to release, we want to um, minimum size but release, um, or we want to uh, release with debug info. So I can say I want a uh, release, and it will start building. And This thing is using now all eight cores of the system, so it seems to be going uh, fairly fast. And it built a lot of warnings, but it built. We'll have to clean up those warnings at some point. 
Um, so if I show the products, um, it should have built a framework. And yeah, there's the framework. Now notice though that in our build directory, we have another directory called build, and Xcode made a thing called release. And if I change to debug, it will make another folder called debug, and I'll put those binaries in debug. So this is what I call respecting the IDE. The IDE wants to do things, and it wants to place binaries in a certain place, so it doesn't get confused. And so this is why build products um, are intended to really go different places depending on your IDE in our current CMake design. So I encourage you not to try to force Xcode to do something that the make file generator is doing or vice versa. Instead, if you need the thing to go to a final place, that's what the install target is for. So um, another target that we have is um, install, and that works a lot like um, the install that we saw earlier. So um, if I go to my library frameworks folder, we'll see that there's no framework in there yet. So if I build, um, now the Chosky framework will be installed. And actually, we also do library application support, and Chosky plugins will be copied in there. And then we also have an uninstall target. But I want to move to the package. Um, so this package, by default, will invoke the apple.pkg um, installer. And so now it's um, creating the package. And it finished. So let's take a look at the product. And you see that uh, DMG was uh, created here. And oh, it looks like it created a tar and shell script also. But we have this Mac package, and it uses the standard OS X um, package installer. Now, I'm not a fan of package installers on the Mac um, because they're, they're really not the Mac way of doing it. It's sort of a thing of last resort. Um, but CMake does a pretty good job of actually making them. So um, we'll actually just install it just to demonstrate the point. Um, drag and drop is certainly preferred on the system if you can do it. Now, if we, uh, and now it should have basically overwrote the files that I'd already um, done. Now, one of the flaws of a Mac package is there's really no uninstall. So um, uh, we could cheat, though. So let me go to application support, Chosky. And, uh, and we could do an uninstall from here, and then it should delete at least the individual components. Though, as I mentioned, um, the directories are left behind because of a, uh, a limitation in the current uninstall script. So that is uh, Xcode in a nutshell. Now, um, the main advantage of, of course, using Xcode is the fact that you can um, use this for as, as your debugger. So we can build and go, and oh, let me set the teapot. So we're going to build the teapot, and then we're going to run it. And the nice thing is I'm running directly through Xcode. So now I can quit. So that's Xcode in a nutshell. So now. Let's finish it off by going to Visual Studio.